Hey everybody, today I'm going to be showing you how to set up a development environment for Sakai OAE. So we're just going to jump right into it. Now the first thing we need to do is create a directory to house the Sakai OAE. So I'm going to choose my desktop. And I'm going to make a directory called Sakai OAE. From here, I'm going to hop into that directory and I'm going to run a curl command that is going to grab the latest. So this URL will point you to the latest and allow for redirects and name the file nakamura.jar. This command and any other commands or steps that are required are going to be listed in the description. So this will take a while depending on your connection speed. Um, and this is going to be the entire binary release of the Sakai OAE. So we're going to give it a, a minute for that to download. Okay, so uh, the jar has finished downloading. If we take a look in our directory, we'll see that we have a nakamura.jar. So now we just need to run a Java command to run that jar. And this is it. It'll run the jar file and it will also um, allocate a little bit of extra memory to run it. So we're going to run that. And you're going to see it's launching a server. And this is going to take a few minutes to start up as well. So we're going to wait for that to start up. Okay, so uh, Nakamura or Sakai OAE has uh, finished starting up. Uh, the key message here is that the Felix. Uh, start level has changed so that tells us that the server is finished starting up so we are going to pull up Firefox and we're going to take a look and we're going to hop over to localhost 8080 and there we have it from here we can sign up create content, share content, we can do anything that we would normally do in a running instance of OAE. But since we're running a single binary jar file, we don't have access to the source files so that we can make modifications. So if we want to access the source code, we need to go to GitHub, which is where we uh, manage and host our source code. GitHub.com slash Sakai project which will return a list of the repositories for the Sakai project. And of interest to us is 3 Akai UX, which is the code name for our front end code. And what we want to do is we want to fork this, and that is to say we want to make our own copy so that we can push our changes to our own copy without necessarily affecting this main uh, repository. So we're going to click fork over here in the top right and we'll get this uh, nifty animation here saying that it's making a fork for us or a copy. Now from here um, we have our own copy of the repository hosted on GitHub but it's not yet on our local machine. So to do that we're going to uh, clone this repository here onto our local machine. To do that we use this URL we can just click this button here to copy it. What we're going to do is we're going to jump back into our terminal, open up a new tab, and we're in the correct directory. We're going to run git clone, and then we're going to paste that URL. This also might take a minute or two because it has to uh, transfer over the repository. All right, uh, our clone has finished. So if we take a look in our directory here, we'll see that we have 3 Akai UX, which is our front-end code for Sakai OAE. So now what we need to do is we need to make sure that our instance of Sakai OAE is going to use our front-end code rather than the front-end code that came with it. So to do that, uh, we have some configuration files that we can make so that um, certain directories are mapped to this uh, 3 Akai UX folder. Uh, and namely, the directories that we want to map are dev and dev widgets here. So 
we're going to go back up a directory. The first thing we need to do is make a directory called load. Uh, another thing that we need to do is we need to save the current directory that we're in into a variable. So if we echo that, it points us to the directory that we're in now. So I'm going to copy and paste a command here that is going to do the configuration mapping. Um, this is also going to be in the description. All of the commands um, that are used in this video and steps will be provided in the description. So we'll paste this guy in. And this is going to map the dev directory to our own one locally instead of the one that they use. And there's a special configuration file for this. And now we just need to do the same with dev widgets, uh, which is where our widgets are going to go. Okay, so we've done the mapping. Now all we need to do is test it out and make sure that it works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change directory into 3 Akai UX into dev. I'm going to create a new file. I'm just going to use VI as a text editor. I'm going to call it testing.html. I'm just going to paste the basic hello world in there. So now we want to see if that file at dev testing.html works. And sure enough, we get our hello world file. And that's it. So we've successfully downloaded the jar file with the binary release. Uh, we got it running. We forked a copy of the front end code from GitHub, cloned it so we could modify it locally. And then we uh, did the file system mapping so that our files would be used on the front end instead of the files that shipped with uh, Sakai OAE. You now have your development environment set up and running and you're ready to make modifications and start building things. Uh, and that's it for today, guys. I look forward to hearing from you guys on IRC and in the mailing list. And hopefully we'll see some cool widget submissions from you guys in the widget library. Thanks.